everybody. Welcome back to another very special episode of The Flat World. It's your buddy Mog Swamp here, and this is episode 100. We finally made it. This world was actually started on May 7th, 2012. It's a vanilla survival single player let's play that I've been doing. It's on hard mode, and uh, crucially, it is a uh, super flat uh, world type, so there's no terrain. Everything you see here was basically stuff that I put there with my own hands. So we're going to go ahead and kick off this tour in this giant castle thing. This is my main base and the first structure that I ever really built on the flat world, although it didn't always look like this. Um, but before we get into sort of the history of me building this place up, I just wanted to say that um, for new viewers, uh, this is a complete world tour, but for returning viewers, I'm hoping to make this sort of a fun tour for you guys because as we're going through and looking at everything we've built, I will be including a few time lapses here and there, and we're actually going to be adding some stuff uh, while we're on the tour. So I, I think it'll be sort of a cool, you know, buildy episode mixed with a tour all in one. But uh, as you can see, I've dropped down into the main storage area of this castle here. Let me just uh, show you kind of how we got to this point. So the first step on a super flat world is gonna be to get yourself a bed, go find a, a couple sheep, punch them for wool. Um, you wanna go find a village as fast as you can. You used to have to get saplings from blacksmith chests in the villages, but now uh, the trees just spawn naturally in the villages. Um, I like to make a trench early game for the slimes to sit in to sort of fill up the mob cap so they don't annoy you so much. Get a food source. Um, you can also get obsidian from blacksmith chests as well as lava and water in the villages uh, to, to help you create obsidian in order to get to the nether. Um, and then once you do that, really uh, you have access to a lot more uh, materials which you can use to make stuff like an iron farm, village trading system, all the different farms you wanna do. So I had a loose vision of how I wanted my base to be sketched out and sort of this giant circle shapes started to, started to form and my goal is to eventually fill up this base with just a labyrinth of different farms and rooms and you know a mix of function and form and just sort of make it one big maze to explore. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that little clip show of some of the earlier episodes. They're all up on the channel in case you wanna check them out. But as you saw in that last clip, we had just sort of formed this big cylinder out of stone bricks. So this half of the storage room is pretty true to how it always was. I haven't really touched this area uh, since it was built, uh, which is you know, close to nine years ago. And uh, yeah, it was pretty simple back in the day, just some furnaces, crafting tables, some chests. You didn't used to be able to put the chests right next to each other, so that's why they're, uh, they have space between them like this. And uh, eventually, I went ahead and retrofit this side with a auto sorting system so that uh, now you can come in here and uh, certain objects like uh, acacia logs, for example, will uh, get sorted properly into the right chest. I don't have every item, um, just a selection of items that uh, I, I had a lot of basically and I didn't know where else to put them. And before I forget, a super important part of my world is that if you load in items to be sorted, you can go into the spank machine. This fountain, which is sort of the centerpiece of this storage room, is sort of my like little naturey area. And uh, yeah, we've got actually a little lodestone, so I've got a compass map to here in case I ever get lost. There's a little hidden crafting table in there. And if you look straight up, uh, you can drop all the way from the top level uh, all the way down to here. So as you can see, part of uh, living on the flat world is constantly having to deal with slimes. I've done my best to have slab areas where slimes could spawn, but there are one or two places in the tower here where they still spawn, uh, but it's really no big deal. Maybe you've noticed you can actually go to the bottom of this little fountain here, and uh, this is the basement, and there's actually some cool stuff down here, um, including the four beacons that power the base, and uh, and all these old chests. I had some 
kind of bulk storage down here from back in the day. This is one of the cooler parts about the world. It's so old that I have a ton of these petrified oak slabs, which you actually mine with a pickaxe. And uh, yeah, if you try to mine them with a regular axe, it, it goes really slowly. And uh, because they're treated like stone slabs, they're actually fireproof as well. This wall of furnaces here in the main room is, uh, actually used to be my main furnace array. I just did it everything by hand before I ever bothered to make a super smelter. Um, and then you can see the dragon egg is actually hanging out here. So uh, this is a good story to tell. In 1.16, there was a glitch. Uh, strongholds actually generated on a default super flat world. And so uh, because I wanted to go to the end so bad, I deleted the part of my save file that told the game whether it should generate structures or not. And then because the game was in that one update where default super flat worlds did generate strongholds, when th the file rebuilt itself, it, uh, it actually did generate a stronghold. So I was able to go to the end and that's why I have uh, the wings and all of my shulker boxes and stuff and I'm really glad I ended up doing that um, I super recommend if you're ever gonna try out flat world to make sure generate strongholds is on because uh, It really opens up the game uh, I was able to accomplish so much more in the last year since I defeated the ender dragon than You know the eight years before that or so working on this world over here You can see the slime farm. I have this is a relatively new addition to the world yeah, it just kind of sits here collecting slime. I craft it into slime blocks every once in a while. I'll probably rip this out eventually. On the other side here uh, is a stone generator that I still use all the time. And this is actually very, very old. If I come into the wall here, you can see sort of the control room for it. And basically uh, there's a giant stone or cobblestone rather uh, generator back here. Um, which is probably super outdated and could be made a lot faster, but back in the day this was the fastest one you could make and It pushes stone into that little room. So before I had uh, Mending enchantments. I never liked to use my diamond picks for mining stone uh, And so basically how this worked was you would pull this and it would shoot out iron picks and they would cycle through and then shoot out again and you'd stand there mining all night basically, I'd fill it up with iron picks and every time your pick broke, uh, it would get replaced by another one in your inventory. Uh, so yeah, this thing still works and I still use it sometimes. The cobblestone all funnels down through the hoppers way over to here and this is again a relatively new area of my base. Most of the stuff in this area is new. Um, so sugarcane I was able to get because of the wandering trader which was added, I believe, in like 1.14 or something like that. Same goes for cactus. Those were two things I never had before uh, recent updates. And then, yeah, as I was saying, the cobblestone funnels down over to here. So this is my bulk storage for cobble. Uh, and then if we come over this way, I've actually got bulk storage for stone and for smooth stone as well. And how it works is I've got a little control panel here where I can flip the lever to just automatically start converting the cobble in that bulk storage into stone if I want to using a smelter. And I've got another lever for converting the stone into smooth stone. So there's actually two smelting arrays. This one um, takes the kelp from up above. Uh, I've got like a little kelp farm and it smelts all the kelp because the kelp blocks are a really good fuel source and uh, all the kelp funnels down to these chests. I craft it all into kelp blocks and then I put the kelp blocks in here and then the kelp blocks then automatically go up to this next super smelter up here where I can feed anything into it and it automatically smelts it. So I can feed this super smelter uh, through this little chest here or I can come up another level up to here and access the chest directly right here. And uh, this is something I very recently built. Uh, it's a stone farm and uh, I just built it so that I wouldn't have to actually mine the cobble and then convert it to stone. I can just mine the stone with silk touch and automatically have stone. And it feeds into that same bulk storage system. Last but not least, I've got a basalt farm right here. 
where I can mine basalt super, super duper fast. And then I've got another lever that will drain that to the smelter in order to make the new smooth basalt. And that all funnels down into these chests here. So, well, the basalt does. The, the rest of the smooth basalt would just go to the normal smelting chest because I don't have an item sorter for that. Uh, I'm not sure I can fit it. I might try and fit it down there. Um, but yeah, for now, it would just go into this chest here. While we're up here, you can kind of see what I was talking about earlier, where eventually I want to fill up this whole tower with rooms. Uh, this is one of the spots where you can sort of see behind the curtains and see all the stuff I've built. Uh, eventually, I want everything to feel nice and clean like it does when you're down here, and it just feels like everything's planned out and closed in and, you know, looking nice. Over here, we've got this one little room that I built a really long time ago. This controls the uh, beacons. I can turn them on and off. Uh, and then there's another control array, but I never hooked it up to anything. And then if we look through here, there's another really old room on the world. Uh, this has been here forever, but this water elevator was added in the ocean update. I think that was 1.13. Um, before then, it was actually a piston elevator but it was always breaking and uh, if it was at all laggy, it wouldn't work. So that should be just about everything that's here on the base level of the world. Um, I think the only thing I may have missed is this portal here, which is sort of the main portal in the base that I use. There's also some horse stuff. There was an old horse ladder here that I am halfway through ripping out as you can see because it doesn't work anymore. And yeah, the only other thing I can think of is this thing right here, which again is something I was in the process of ripping out. It was just like a water elevator for mobs uh, because originally when I built this, I needed a way to get cows and sheep up to the top level there. All right, so let's uh, take a trip up this water elevator. And uh, because there was always an elevator here, this room is also pretty old, but uh, I've recently spruced it up uh, ever since they added the Wandering Trader, I got access to all the different wood types. So that's how I have the birch and the dark wood and the spruce everywhere. And so uh, it looks a lot nicer now than it used to. Um, this is a very recent addition. This is just 1.17. They added axolotls, which you can get on the flat world. So I made a little aquarium for all the different colors of axolotls. And they just swim around there. I really like this. Um, I always just kind of had like a blank space there that I didn't know what to do with. And that's one of the things I like to do on this flat world is just wherever there's like a little space between the walls, I like to try and put something. Um, this was a really old tree farm. Um, I've got a bigger manual tree farm now. These are actually pretty old as well. I've got a potato farm with a little silo here. And on the other side, I've got a carrot farm with another little silo so you can see how many chests full in the recent past, I added in this beetroot farm here, and then there's also another wart farm on the other side. And again, none of them are automatic. They're all just kind of old school farms, but I kind of like it that way. Again, talking about just packing little things wherever they fit, if you go under this staircase here, uh, it leads down to a little tiny little compact melon and pumpkin farm. And it's, it's pretty slow because there's not many cells, but because I'm always around the base, uh, it works decently, uh, it, it, for my needs at least. If we double back and come down this way, you'll see um, there's some drop shoots down into this fountain if I wanna just drop down real quick. I'll show you guys my bedroom. This is like a really old sort of gag on the world. It's Mog's room and I used to basically add on to this room at the end of every episode. And it's like just this little tiny nook in the wall that fits between a bunch of places. And you can sort of tell where it goes. Like if I break a few things, you can see that it's like just right inside the wall here. There's some inside jokes like Helge's hold gold. If you've been watching for a long time, you'll, you'll know. And then if we keep going this way, there's a bunch of storage. So I've actually got a mob farm that sits on top of the tower and I can, <laughs> there's a bunch of different options of what I can do with the mobs. I'll actually show you it right now. If we go up here, you can see where they drop down. So I've got a switch on each of these pillars. There's a mob sorting switch. There's a switch to turn on the uh, on and off the villager breeder, which I think this one's broken. 
Um, and then we've got a switch for the lights in the mob farm if I want to turn it off. And then this is the XP farm. So basically if I flip the switch to turn the XP farm off, it redirects the mobs so that they're no longer falling down here. And they'll redirect to these four tunnels instead. Uh, where they basically automatically die instead of me having to kill them. And uh, all the drops basically get automatically sorted. So if we come back down these stairs again, that's what I'm pointing out here. These are where the four shoots end up. And then we've got our auto sorting right here. And it goes into some massive bulk storage below. You can see all the chests down there. And you'll see there's, there's tons of access points to the places we've seen, like the carrot farm. I try to make everything like very accessible. We've got little slime block elevators, you know, boosters here and there. I just try to make it really easy to get from one room to another in the base because like I said, it is sort of a labyrinth. So it's easy to get lost or confused. If we come this way, I've got a cow farm and a pig farm up above on the surface where I can AFK and just keep breeding them. And all the cows and pigs will come down these tunnels. I can flip a switch to either turn them directly into cooked meat or bring them into these holding cells. And here I can either milk the cows or hit them with looting to get more leather. Here I've got the pigs where I can basically put a saddle on them and give them a carrot on a stick and ride them out of here if I want to, or I can just hit them with looting. And then there's an automatic chicken farm here, which is actually one of my main sources of food on the flat world. This is the other manual tree farm I was talking about. Uh, this is pretty dang old, <laughs> and if I ever want to just go mine a bunch of oak wood, I can do so. There's something about these old manual farms in Minecraft that just make me super nostalgic. And speaking of old farms, if I drop down a level here, you'll see most of it is taken up by this massive, massive wheat farm, which if I turn it on, it absolutely lags out the game. But all the wheat is funneled into these water streams here, and I just get a massive amount of wheat and seeds. Uh, I really hate using this farm to be honest because replanting it takes like literally half an hour. And again, it's just one of these things where I, I love the way these older farms in the game look. It's, it's just so satisfying. Down on this level, you can also see the map of the world, which is something I'm super proud of. Uh, as you can see, we're here in the center of the big castle, tower, whatever you want to call it. Now, for the longest time, I just had a big square kind of floating. But one of the things I did in the last year was plan out uh, a much cooler landscape to surround the base, which we'll take a look at soon. And eventually, I'd like for this all to be one massive, massive city. From this map, you can see a lot of the new things I've built, as well as some of the older ones. There's a spider farm here, which we'll go take a look at soon. There's a massive mob farm here, which I built many years ago. Here is a giant mountain, which I also built many years ago by pouring water and lava to basically create a giant cobblestone mound. And then over here, you can see the newer mountains I've built within the past year or so, which are just hollow because I've placed all the dirt by hand. Up here, you can see Salacia, which is a really old project in, uh, in our world that we basically almost finished. It's it's pretty much 90% done at this point. So we'll go take a look at that soon as well. So yeah, again, eventually I want all of these rooms to be closed off. But for now, if you come down here, you can sort of get a good idea of where everything is. There's the kelp farm we were looking at earlier. There's the top of the cobblestone generator I showed you guys. We've got the uh, sugarcane farm, the cactus farm over there in this little kind of like indoor park that I built. Um, there's the slime farm down there, the dragon egg. So you can sort of get an idea of the layout of this tower. Let's continue back up here and you'll see um, this, this mob farm really is sort of the centerpiece here. But then we've got uh, our villager trading station. This room is basically entirely new. I, I built up a whole villager trading system finally and made it like really nice so that I can get the best trades from these guys and there's a infinite villager breeder up top and I can basically redirect them with a bunch of buttons and mine carts and stuff like that. Over here we've got a really old room. This is the library. I built this forever ago so I can just uh, by al alphabetical order find you know protection, get all my protection books. It's also where I do my enchanting. I've got a little enchanting table here. 
And if we go up, uh, there's like sort of like a little cafe that I never really quite finished. Um, we used to have people in the comments name some of the paintings. So Foo Foo Cuddly Poops, old legend, super, uh, super old fan of mine. Uh, same with Yergzim and uh, Jared Charles as well. These were all people who would watch the videos uh, and pretty much comment on all of them. So shouts out to those people, wherever they are now. <laughs> and uh, another fun thing about the library is at the end of every episode, uh, between episodes 58 and 78, we used to basically have a story where you could comment and add to the story in each comment. So like the first one was just, there once was a na man named Mog Swamp. But then if we look at the next one, uh, this was commented by Floris van der Velden. And we basically just added a little bit to the story every single episode. It was a fun little tradition we had going for a while. Now the other two quadrants of the top of this base are a little bit empty. This used to be like a portal room, but I ripped it all out because I didn't really like it and I never really put anything else here. This uh, nice cyan carpet that we've got going through here, this all just used to be red wool. It, <laughs> It looks so much better with this little carpet pattern that I did. This last room here is another kind of like defunct room. There's like some old squid farm attempts I had made back when you could still get squids in the flat world. You can't anymore as of the ocean update. Uh, and then I showed you before that like water elevator that I would use for cows and sheep and stuff like that used to come right up to here. Um, and then there's this little access point to get to this extra level of the base here where I just kind of throw all my redstone contraptions. And then way over here, there's the villager breeder up there. Actually, I'll just go up to the top real quick. This area is pretty empty too. This is the mob farm itself. It's uh, actually my own design. I invented it probably eight or nine years ago. But yeah, this, this area is all kind of messy. So let's go back down. <laughs> um, I do want to say I don't have a potion room on the flat world and I'll probably use one of these empty rooms to make a potion room. Uh, the, the, the story of me and potions in this world is I did build a potion room once, then the, my world got corrupted and I lost the file and had to revert to a backup. And then years later, I built it again. And in the very next update, the they changed the way that uh, the brewing stands worked. And so the potion room was basically defunct again, so I just ripped it out. But yeah, guys, I think that's pretty much it for this tower. We've covered pretty much everything that's here. Uh, so I'd say it's about time we move on to the other stuff to see in the world. Um, and before we get to all the cool stuff that surrounds the tower, I actually want to take you guys to an old spot that I never visit anymore um, called the Garden of Pharos. So let's take a little flight over there and check that out. All right, guys, so this is T-Pone 2424's Garden of Pharaohs, another super old fan of mine uh, who was super sweet and donated what I think was the first ever person to donate to the channel, which was so kind. It was basically made because I needed to build the iron farm far enough away from the base that the villagers wouldn't interact. So I just went out about, I don't know, uh, 800 blocks or so apparently and built this. And so we've got these two giant trees that look like dumbbells. That's where the iron farms were. And uh, obviously it no longer works anymore as of 1.14 or whatever village and pillage was. I get all my version numbers a little mixed up, but uh, they used to just come down through here and drop down into here. And I've still got just like a bunch of iron from when it still worked backed up. I haven't actually built a new working iron farm yet because I haven't run out of iron yet. Down here is sort of a cave that I built. It was the cave of donations. Um, let me just go back up to the entrance. Yeah, so we're at the entrance of the Garden of Pharaohs. You come down and there's this little donation sign. And these were all the people that donated to me back in the day. And I actually, yeah, I guess I still have the dates. So t 2424 donated me $50 in 2012. Uh, again, that was my first ever donation. And then uh, we got two words for you. Another legend, we've got, uh, let's see. Z and X Bell, another legend. Dude, these names make me so nostalgic because these were people who were really amazing fans of mine, would comment and interact on every single video and it just meant the world to me. And Rick Clark with $40 donation, another just like complete legend. 
And basically with this cave area, I was just trying to replicate the Minecraft terrain as best as I could. And I did a similar thing up here. And I, I think I've gotten a lot better at terraforming since this. But uh, on this other side here, we've got the first 150 subscribers to my channel, which is really cool to have this just written down like that. Um, some of these people are like still watching to this day. So it's just really cool to have this room here. Uh, if we head in this direction, you'll see the giant Iron Golem statue in the distance. This was something I built uh, back when I built this farm in order to house all the villagers for villager trading. Uh, I think there's a hole sort of in his crotch. Uh, yeah, there's just a whole heap of old villagers in here. Some of them might even be like glitched out because they're so old. But yeah, this is just another one of those like sort of messy areas on my world where I would just do all sorts of random trading. There's just like random stuff everywhere. Yeah, if you look off this platform, you can just sort of see the natural super flat world. This area is just super cursed. There's like an old village that is like half destroyed with a bunch of random minecart chests everywhere. I don't know, just just really weird stuff. I had tried to build like a fake abandoned mine shaft down here as well uh, that leads back to the main area just because I was moving so many things back and forth. And before Shulkers and Elytra, uh, using minecart chests was actually my best way of getting things around quickly. The only other thing I haven't showed you guys over here is this farm that I still use a lot because it's basically my only sheep farm or my only wool farm, I should say. Now that shears can automatically uh, shear a sheep from a dispenser, it's just always collecting wool while it's running. So yeah, it's, it's even filling up right now as we speak. So it's a pretty cool farm. I still use it to this day, uh, but eventually I really do want to build some sheep farms closer to my main base with all the different colors of wool. That's about all I built out here. And uh, it's, it's sort of a weird old place on my world that I have a fondness for. Uh, even though it's a little bit cursed, like I said. So we're flying back now, and on our way back, we're going to run into the massive mob farm, which I built, I don't know, this this was maybe 2014, I, I want to guess that I built this, and it still works incredibly, uh, mainly because everything on the flat world is uh, not spawnable because I placed all this water. So there's no other places for the mobs to spawn, so they just go crazy in here. And you can see one of the little charming things about my world is this wall of fireballs that just exists here. <laughs> Basically, the story behind these fireballs is that when I hit a thousand subscribers, I built uh, the number a thousand in pixel art out of wool at the end of this pathway because none of this existed yet. I've reached a thousand subscribers. That's right, guys, a thousand subs. Thank you so much. I'm going to give you uh, the best equivalent of a fireworks display I can do here on the flat world without paper. Uh, so here we go. Hopefully it looks cool. <laughs> and I fired a bunch of fireballs at it to burn it down. And then whenever I came out here to build the mob farm, apparently this is where uh, they had just like deloaded. And the entities are now just kind of like frozen in time. You can't interact with them or anything. Um, but down here, we've actually got the sorting system for it, which I did very recently because in the past, I only had access to hoppers. I couldn't use ice. I, uh, the system could never keep up with the amount of drops that were going through it. But ever since they added the Wandering Trader, I have access to a small amount of ice at a time that I can buy from him. And eventually, I got enough ice to be able to build a little... Uh, sorting system for this and uh, super huge shouts out to Redstone CPU. I'll link her channel down in the description. She helped me actually plan out uh, the collection system for this in a way that saves on the ice because uh, I don't have that much ice. So huge shout out to Redstone CPU for helping me with this project. But yeah, all of the different drops that you that possibly come out of this farm basically funnel into here. And because witches can rarely spawn in here, you do get all the witch drops as well. So it kind of acts like a really, really inefficient witch farm. Over here, I've just got a little bit of a uh, automatic wheat or beetroot or carrot or potato farm, whatever you want to do with it. You know how they work. There's, it's just full of bone meal. Actually, this is the first thing I want to do on our little tour here, I want to stop and just really quick 
build up a flower farm because I've been meaning to do this forever and I like to build farms that require bone meal right next to this thing because I've got so many bones right here for the taking. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. I'm just gonna do it off camera, but I'll link the tutorial that I used in the description. Alrighty guys, it's all done. I managed to make the farm and yeah, it was pretty easy. It didn't take me very long, maybe 20 minutes or so. Um, but here's how it works. I just uh, hit that little lever, all the bone meal starts going. And whenever I'm done, the water comes out, washes all that away into these hoppers, and I got all these little flowers here. So this is great. I'll have uh, just a quick, easy way to get a ton of flowers instead of having to bone meal the ground and hope for the kind of flower I want. Uh, every single time. So that's really nice to have. While we're out here by the mob farm, you can start to get uh, a peek at the massive wall that sort of makes up the outside of this base. Basically, I went ahead and built up all these little platforms where I wanna have a city surrounding the castle. And like I said, in the past, if you went above here, it was just one big floating square of dirt. And recently, within the last 10 episodes, I carved off the corners of the square, turned it into a circle, and then added all these extra platforms. So now everything is sort of closed in, and instead of my base just being floating up here, it's it's all rooted and connected to the ground. And uh, yeah, now that we're up here, you can also see these four buildings that surround the main castle. I'm not sure what the fate of these areas is as, as we build the city. I do like the outer wall. I think I can spruce it up because basically like this center tower used to just be stone bricks. It was super, super boring. It sort of looked just like this. It was just like stone bricks and nothing else, right? Uh, and then within the last few episodes, I decided to revamp it. Uh, that was after 1.16 came out and we made it look really nice. Um, and so I kind of want to do the same thing with these buildings because when I built these I was so proud of this design. I thought it looked incredible and uh, I think just with the new blocks I have access to here on the flat world We could convert this wall to look a lot nicer. So stopping by the map you just saw uh, This little mob farm here with the wall of fireballs. The next thing I want to take a look at is The south where I've got the little spider cathedral. So let's go take a look all right, so the cathedral is a super recent part of the world. This is something uh, I built within the last five episodes. Um, but what it covers up is something that's been here forever, basically. This uh, spider farm is super, super old. And uh, it's another design that I made myself. In fact, uh, the tutorial is still up and I still get comments on it from time to time. For the longest time, it was just a giant floating stone brick thing. You can kind of see that still. Um, and I decided I wanted to hide it within a structure, so I built this giant cathedral. Um, but the cathedral's actually not done. There's a few things I wanna do, and I think we're actually gonna do it right after I finish showing you the interior. We really need to put in glass into these towers. We never finished off the, the basically stained glass towers. And uh, yeah, we also need to figure out some sort of structure and interior for this part to just dress it up a little, because right now it looks a little sloppy. Uh, yeah, basically the whole church is themed like a spider, so you can sort of see I was going for like the red eyes and the like fangs coming down and like all the spidery legs with the outside of it. And so we continued the black and red color scheme on the inside. We've got this big pipe organ at the end here, which I think is pretty cool. And one of my favorite little Easter eggs is that I've got the proper record here so that we can come down and just right click. But yeah, uh, you've got the little uh, place. Are, are these the pews or is this the pew? I never know. But this is where the people sit and this is where the, the preacher stands. One of them is a pew. So in order to get the drops from this farm, you can come on behind the pipe organ and there's a little drop down here. And it just leads to a little collection area that I built uh, where the drops all funnel down into these chests. And you can see I just got a bunch of string collecting. And you actually get uh, axolotls and glow squid as well. Axolotls don't drop anything, but the glow squid drop their sacks down into here. So that's how I've been getting all my glow squid sacks. 
unlike the squid, which are biome locked to like ocean and river biomes, the glow squid, it doesn't matter what biome you're in. So I was able to get them and they just started collecting drops for me without me having to do anything, which was super nice. I didn't have to build a farm. It just basically used my existing spider farm and now I get the sacks automatically. But yeah, guys, I'd say let's go ahead and hop into a little time lapse and I'm going to try and finish off this little cathedral. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that little time lapse. I had a lot of fun just adding in the windows up top here, kind of smoothing out the interior a little bit. There's still a little work to do here and there, but I've got this thing a lot more spawn proof, so there shouldn't be so many mobs spawning around in here. And the walls are just tidied up a little bit, so it doesn't look so sloppy and half finished. Um, like I said, there's still a few things that, that need to be tuned up here and there, but I'm pretty happy with the state of the cathedral, at least for this tour. Um, we added two bells in the bell tower and cleaned up the bell towers a little bit. And uh, the main thing I'm not sure what to do with is sort of this top area, oop, this top area up here. Um, yeah, I'm just not sure if I should build something up here. Um, I was thinking maybe I could do a couple of farms up here. And then, yeah, I'm not sure what to do with the back here either. And yeah, these windows are still open, but I kind of like how you can fly in and out from here. But for, for now, I'm going to leave it and we can move on with our tour. But yeah, um, hopefully you guys enjoyed the little time lapse. I had a lot of fun. So now that we've seen the cathedral and the mob farm, let's head on over to Withering Heights, which is our giant mountain here. So over here we have Withering Heights, which is another super old build. And the way I did it was by pillaring up way high to sky limit and basically dumping buckets of lava and buckets of water down consecutively to build up a giant mound of cobblestone. And what's cool about doing that is that this thing is actually uh, pretty solid. I, I say pretty solid because when you do that technique, you kind of get a Swiss cheese effect. You get a lot of random air spaces, uh, which has the negative effect of a lot of mobs are able to spawn in random spots in the wall. So don't ever build one of these near somewhere where you want to have a mob farm. And in here you can see another random quirk of my world. These are everywhere, these little floating wither heads. Um, they're from all the wither fights I've had, and I again, I think it was 
some sort of glitch in the game where once the entity left the screen, um, it would just freeze in time, kind of like the fireballs did. <laughs> But yeah, it's called Withering Heights, uh, not only because of the book, but because uh, this is where I would always go to fight the Wither. I just put him deep inside of here because I know that he's probably not gonna make it out of the mountain before I kill him, and I'd never wanna risk destroying all my stuff. And before we move on, I'm just gonna point out a few more of those Wither Skulls. It's funny, because I think they glow. Yeah, so here are three of them here. There's another one right here. Pretty sure there's one right here. Yep, there's one. Oh yeah, there it is. And another three up here. This is such a weird world. Oh, and before we move on, while I'm under here, this reminded me, when horses came out, I wanted to get some horses to spawn in the world. But because the base is close to my spawn chunks, um, I had too many passive mobs in my spawn chunks for more passive mobs to spawn anywhere in the world. And so I built this giant tunnel to basically bring two of each animal over to this arc um, and I put two of each of the animals on here. Yeah, then once I did that and killed all the animals back at the main base, I was able to get horses. Yeah, so that is Withering Heights and as you look this way, you can see some of the cities start to load in. This is a super recent build of mine. This is the uh, honey slash honeycomb farm that I'm really proud of. Um, when bees came out into the game, we built this and I, you can tell that my building has come a long way. I've got like a custom tree here, little pond. Um, if we come up into the house, you've just got like a little interior design here, pretty simple. And then I've got a bed upstairs in case I need to sleep. I can fill it with honey bottles here and then all that fills down into the system so that it can start collecting honey. And then if I come over to here, these are the beehives which feed into this chest right here. We get honeycomb and honey bottles. And then if I come around to the back, you've got this little basement here with all of my bulk storage of these items. And I just kinda made it look a little more natural instead of just having big piles of chests. Uh, just beyond our honey farm is this massive area over here. This is basically the beginning of my addiction to terraforming. Um, I basically wanted to extend the mountains of Salacia, or excuse me, the mountain of Withering Heights over to Salacia over there. And so I built this giant mountain range just by hand in the past couple episodes. And uh, yeah, it took me forever, but I am just absolutely addicted to doing terraforming like this now. Back in the day, it would have taken me so much longer but whenever I run out of dirt, I can just put on my elytra, go fly, dig some, put it in shulker boxes and get back to work. If you're wondering like how I was able to spend like eight or nine years in this world, and yet there's not actually that much on the world, it's mostly because uh, A, there were a lot of limitations in the older versions of Flat World where you couldn't get to the end and uh, get shulkers or elytra. And then B, um, there were a lot of periods, especially during the four years that I was in college where, you know, I wouldn't really work on this world much at all. But while we're here, I wanna do the next little update to the world. So I really want to build up like a little bit of the city here. Um, this is supposed to be a whole port and you can see sort of like the shanty town over here. And then it goes over into this like medieval dock area. And eventually I wanna build a real big ship and all the sailors will be able to come up and uh, sleep in the inn, in the tavern, and like have a good time. There'll be a bunch of shops here for them, and uh, maybe like a crane to unload things from the ship. I at least wanna get started on the tavern, because I think that would be a really cool thing uh, to just sort of frame up these mountains a little bit. The other thing I wanna work on is uh, like a little hobbit hole here. I have an idea for just like putting a little bit of a hobbit hole here that I think would look really cool. So let's get started. Alrighty guys, there we go. I uh, spent a lot of time on this, did a few streams and hung out with you guys. And here is how the tavern came out. I'm super happy with it. Uh, I finally got the wandering trader to give me some moss and so off camera, I went ahead and scattered around some moss and azalea leaves and different stuff like that into the world, which I think looks so nice. If we come up here, 
Um, I'm basically planning to have a little bit of a kitchen in here, maybe the reception area right here where they check you into the hotel. Uh, then this will probably be the like seating for the restaurant slash bar. And then if you come up the stairs here, this is where I'm gonna hopefully have all the rooms. So I've got them sort of mapped out on the inside here loosely. Yeah, so let's check out this little uh, storefront area. Uh, I'm not sure what each of these places are going to be selling, but I just wanted to like sort of plan out where will bleh, where they'll go and what sort of blocks uh, I'm going to use for the palette on each one. But I'm planning to have the road sort of wrap up around here, maybe have a staircase going up here, and then uh, come cut back this way a little bit. And eventually it's going to meet up with this path over here, which we already laid out in a previous episode. And that leads back to this little house we were working on. But yeah, we, we should probably finish off this house. But yeah, you come up this hill now and we've got a little bit of a hobbit hole here, which I think is super neat. Again, of course I didn't finish this, so there's uh, still a little bit of work to be done on the interior, but I really like the way the outside came out. I. I saw this on Instagram. I wish I could remember the account. I should start really writing it down or saving the Instagram posts. But I saw someone use uh, the blue trapdoors for the window with this little circular shape with the stairs and I just loved how it looked. But for now, let's swing back towards the honey farm and over here into our little pirate village area. And this is another thing I built pretty recently. I think this was around Christmas time that I built this. And it's just a little town uh, full of as much detail as I could possibly pack into it, and I'm super proud of it. You've got a little boat here, there's even like a little pirate ship over there, uh, like just a tiny little mini pirate ship. Um, and then you've got this little merchant ship parked here on the dock. Uh, we've got just fish and, you know, buckets of mystery meat here, blocks of kelp, uh, someone's left their llamas here. Dang it, I tried to make this all spawn proof. I don't know where this guy's spawning. Yeah, you've got this little house here um, with, uh, you know, details in the closet. Like I really tried to just make it so that everything is designed out. You know, you've got this big sliding Japanese style door and this is where they're curing the meats and uh, they've got a dragon head on, on the smoker, I guess. And then back here, we've got sort of a place where they can serve beer, like almost like a beer garden. Yeah, we've got uh, something here. I think, yeah, a little greenhouse on the side. That looks pretty cool. And we need to flesh out the inside of that one a little bit more. A um, little well for people to use. I think this over here is just kind of like a storehouse. Right here, we've got a, a Mog's Meals, the restaurant, which is something I'm super proud of. I think everything in here came out really cool. Here's the kitchen. You can go out and this is where they're bringing in the fish from the dock. We'll maybe have a, a little boat parked here where they're bringing in the fish. And uh, if you go up the stairs, we've got a little access to this porch here where you can look out at the bustling town and a uh, little, little spot to read here. And this is one of my favorite places to sleep because I broke out the windows so that I can just fly right in here on my Elytra. And whenever it's dark out, I sleep right in that bed. And I've got ingredients to make more rockets if I need to. I've got my phone on its charger here and a little, little drink if I get thirsty during the night. The next door neighbor's got a nice little house here as well. We've got bunk beds, little armchair, stuff like that. Uh, if you didn't see, the, the family with the greenhouse has a little plant stand set up. Uh, they've got hay for sale at, at this booth. There's like a little uh, flower tools station. I don't know what you'd call it. Uh, we've got a mushroom soup stand where you can order your mushroom soup. There's this house which could use some interior design. We got to work on that a little bit. But they have a pretty nice backyard here. And then coming over here, we've got another unfinished house, uh, a bigger well, a uh, place to get your rice, which another one of these fantastic banner designs here. And an outdoor seating area. We've got, you know, melons and pumpkins and there's a cake. <laughs> so yeah, these red outlines are like how I plan out where I want more buildings to go. Hopefully I can finish off this little pirate town. Maybe that's what the whole next episode will be about. Doing this little pirate town and finishing off this street and that building 
and the interior of the hobbit hole. I think that would be a good thing to focus on. But yeah, coming over here, you've seen it in the background. I've delayed for long enough. It's the last sort of stop on our tour, basically. It's Salatia, which is a super old project of mine that recently has undergone like some huge changes. So uh, I recently posted a TikTok and also a YouTube short of the progress on my Salatia base. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll actually just insert that here because I think it's really cool to see how it came along over the years. Um, here we can build a giant build and then later submerge it uh, in a giant wall or like cube of water. There we go guys, check that out. If that isn't a cool foundation for a base, then what is? Oh man, that just looks so cool. It's like a big Oreo cookie. So it's gonna be like insane. I don't know if I'll ever actually finish it, but I really hope I do. So I go uh, from these from this corner and sort of spread it a little bit and you can see how it goes all the way down once you do that. Oh, that is so cool! See, that's exactly what I was hoping. I was sort of confident enough to begin the project and I've got like basically one full of the three sides done. But this is a crazy amount of work. This really just puts the sheer scale of this project in perspective for me. Alright guys, if you've made it this far in the video, thank you for sticking with me this long. This is the last thing I want to show you guys today. It's called Salacia. It's my underwater base. But before we dive into showing you guys, there is a little bit of work I want to do on it. I just wanted to build up the terraforming here just a little bit so that from that platform up there, it doesn't look so unfinished right here. So we're just going to build it up a tiny bit. And then the other thing I wanted to do is create a beach on the back side of Salacia here. And uh, I think that'll be really cool. So it's going to take me probably the next week or so. And I'm just going to try and take some screenshots and maybe a, a time lapse. And uh, we'll, we can build that up. So let's get started. I'm, I'm really excited to see how this comes out. So the main reason I wanted to do that time lapse is just for this view. I mean, check out how cool that beach looks now. And over here as well, we did a lot of work just building this up a little bit so it didn't look so barren. And uh, yeah, this is really, this spot right here is one of my favorite views in the entire world. When I have my render distance up super high, you can really just see everything. You can see all the way over the mob farm over there. And you can see my vision for this world where eventually this city will extend all the way over to here. We'll have this bustling bay area and the city will be on this side as well. I'm thinking this path will go down into the city here. So I'm really looking forward to getting this all built up a little bit more. And I, I really enjoyed working on this terraforming. I'm using a lot of blocks that I don't usually use just to give the beach a little bit more of a jungly look and feel than some of the other parts of the terraforming. This statue is actually one of the oldest parts of Salacia. There used to be a big uh, sign that spelled out the Greek word for Salacia, which is like Amphitros or something, I can't remember. I got rid of that and I, I sort of built it into the cliffs here, which I think looks really cool. And uh, yeah, let's just go check it out. Let's uh, fly into this little tunnel here. I'm not, so, I'm not sure if I wanna keep this little tunnel entrance or what. Um, what I want to do with it. Maybe I'll make a, like a little landing pad out here. But this is sort of how I get into Salacia and we're already underwater as you can see. And uh, there's sort of this waterfall that comes down into the main base. So we can come down here and just drop in and bounce off the slime block onto this little building here. This is just sort of my main base in Salacia where I keep my building materials while I'm doing work over here. This is where I sleep usually. Um, and we've just got a few buildings in here to sort of frame up the waterfall nicely. 
Um, when I say Salacia is 90% done, it's because the interior still needs some work. So, that, you know, we've got an unfinished building here. Uh, we could probably do a little bit more with this area over here. We've sort of got like a little green house area to this side where I just put a lot of plants and stuff like that. We could probably revamp this a little bit now that we have a bunch of new, uh, you know, azalea bushes and, and moss to work with. If we come this way, you'll see that there's like a three-story farm here. And what's cool about the water hydrating the farms is that it's all coming from holes in the ceiling. So the water's just kind of naturally flowing down. Same thing with these fountains. The water actually comes from one hole in the ceiling and then trickles down all the way into these fountains here, which I just thought was a cool touch. We sort of have to figure out what to do with this little area. I never quite figured out how I wanted it to look in here. Um, so yeah, that would be probably the last thing we need to do in order to finish Salacia. But if we come through here, you can just see a little bit of how I did the underwater section. We've got fish from the Wandering Trader, and I tried to name all my fish. This is Abed and uh, I think this is Troy here. Yeah, this is Troy. <laughs> we still got maybe a little bit more decorating to do on the seafloor as well, um, because I ran out of coral pretty fast trying to decorate this. But yeah, this was just an enormous terraforming project. And uh, you can just see all the different detail that went into making this seafloor here. For some reason, the fish all like to congregate in this back corner. You can see a big school of them right there. Uh, they all tend to swim over here, and I gotta be kind of careful because there's a bunch of puffer fish as well. But yeah, this is this is Salacia. You know, it's kind of just an Atlantis type of project. I always wanted to build a sort of giant underwater base in Minecraft, and because there's no oceans on the flat world, I had to build my own giant lake for <laughs> for the for the base to sit inside. And I'm I'm just in love with this project. I think it's so cool. One of the coolest parts of the world. And I'm really excited to keep expanding it. And the newest addition of this beach is going to be really awesome because I have plans to basically line it with, you know, beach cabanas and like a little city. I'm planning to take a lot of inspiration from Laurelin, which is the beachside town in Breath of the Wild. And just to give you guys a closer look at some of the blocks we're using in this terraforming, you can see there's a lot of jungle wood. We used uh, bricks, granite, mossy cobblestone, brown mushroom blocks, uh, jungle wood, a little bit of pods all here and there. Uh, we've got soul sand and soul soil. We've got nether bricks scattered around. And then in the more cliffy parts, you've got the acacia, basalt, stone, andesite, cobblestone. Um, and yeah, it's all just sort of working together to create this landscape, and I think it looks really cool. I definitely am learning a lot about terraforming. I never would have been this adventurous with the types of blocks I used in terraforming back in the day, so I think it's starting to look really cool. And, and down here on the beach, you can see I'm mixing sandstone and birch wood and sand, and again, I can't wait to start building some beach huts and, and little places to explore along the beach here. It's kind of crazy to me that like something like this statue has been in the world since pretty much, I don't know, 2013 and uh, the rest of this stuff around it is all brand new and yet somehow it all works together to make one awesome base. And if you just look at the map, you can see just how much we added on to Salacio with this beach area. It's actually a, a whole ton of space we added on. Uh, you can really tell when you look at the map, and uh, it really adds a lot of cool color and variation to this map as well. So, guys, that's that's pretty much the whole world. Um, thanks for joining me on this tour. I guess the one last thing I'll show you before we say our goodbyes is just a quick, quick look at what we have in the nether and the end dimension. So when 1.16 came out, we actually reset our nether, so it's pretty bare bones here, but I just have a portal that goes to a few different locations in the world for fast travel, um, and then if you fly straight up, I've got, uh, stuck on the honey, I've got a hole in the bedrock that leads up to a um, piglin farm that was designed by Redstone CPU. 
And uh, again, her, her channel is linked in the description and we've got an automatic uh, gold trading system so that I can get trades from the piglin in exchange for the gold that we get up in the piglin farm. So it's a, not only is it a really good XP farm, but it's our main source of gold since we can't mine for it. And it's also a great way to get all these resources here. This is our sand farm. If you were wondering how I was able to get all the sand to do that beach in Salacia, uh, this is where all the sand comes from. I got a couple blocks from the wandering trader and then because because we were able to generate a stronghold in 1.16.1, I was able to make this sand duplicator. Again, it's a design I copied from Redstone CPU. And uh, this is how we get all the sand we have on the world. And if we hop into the end here, the other thing we've got in here is just a ender farm. And this is another redstone CPU design that I really love. It's called the Ender Malumpkin Farm because the Endermen can grab pumpkins and melons as they walk by. And uh, you end up getting pumpkins and melons uh, on top of experience and Ender Pearls. The only thing is that uh, I turned off Endermen's ability to pick up blocks because they were griefing my Terraform projects really hard and I just got sick of it. So unfortunately, it doesn't function as it should. I don't get the pumpkins and melons from it because I turned uh, the Enderman griefing off. But if I ever want to use the farm, I can just go into my files and turn Enderman griefing back on. But for now, that's all I have in my nether and my end dimension. Uh, future plans for this world would definitely include sprucing up the end dimension and maybe making a base here now that we've uh, sort of wrapped up the giant Salacia project. Ow, leave me alone. And uh, yeah, we could also sort of flesh out our nether. There's a lot of farms we need to build in the nether, you know, ghast farms and wither skeleton farms, all that sort of stuff. But guys, I think that's pretty much it for this video. I just threw on shaders here so you could sort of check out how the beach looks with the shaders on because it's so gorgeous. I'm sure some of you might have a few questions on how I got certain blocks or how I did certain things in the super flat world. So if you do, please let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to explain how I got anything. But yeah, guys, that's it for this world tour. Thanks again for joining me. I had a lot of fun sharing all of this with you. The world has come a long way since the last world tour we did. Um, so yeah, hopefully if you, uh, if you liked the video, you'll leave a like and subscribe to see how the world comes along in the future. Cause I'm far from being done with this world. Even after nearly a decade, I've got a lot more plans for the future. So, uh, yeah, hopefully you'll subscribe and join me on that journey. Thanks again for watching guys. I'll see you on the next episode. Yeah.